Rosa Shanina was a legendary sniper during World War II, an extraordinary figure whose story is steeped in bravery and resilience. She wasn't just known for her physical beauty, but also for her moral fortitude and astounding accuracy in shooting. Shanina was credited with 59 confirmed kills, a remarkable feat that included taking down 12 enemy soldiers during the Battle of Vilnius alone. Beyond her military accolades, Rosa was a keen observer of the human condition, meticulously recording her experiences in a diary. This document is unparalleled in its insights, offering an intimate view of war, often from a woman's perspective, a narrative seldom found in the annals of military history. Rosa Shanina was born on April 3, 1924, in the village of Yedma, often spelled Zakovo in some documents, in what was then the Soviet Union. Intriguingly, her birth certificate lists her birthplace as the Bogdanovka Commune. She began her education in the village of Dedino and later studied in Bereznik, a village 12 kilometers away from her home. One of her classmates, Franiedma Akaslova, remembered her as being tall, always well-groomed, courageous, and disdainful of idleness. Rosa was candid by nature, always speaking her mind. She had a strong moral compass, illustrated by an incident where she exposed classmates who had stolen from a collective farm's vegetable garden when no one else dared to speak up. In June 1938, upon completing her schooling in Bereznik, Rosa left her commune behind to seek a brighter future in Arkhangelsk. The journey wasn't simple, at just 14 years old, she walked an astounding 200 kilometers to reach Kanashi, the nearest railway station at that time. Once in Arkhangelsk, Rosa joined the Young Communist League and later enrolled in the Arkhangelsk Pedagogical College. According to Tatyana V. Kurichkina, a chronicler of her life, Rosa left for Arkhangelsk against her father's wishes and with scant financial resources. As World War II loomed, economic hardships set in, forcing Rosa to take up a job. Surviving records indicate that she was employed at Kindergarten No. 2 in the Primorsky district of Arkhangelsk, juggling both work and studies. After graduating in 1942, Rosa yearned to serve at the front but was initially turned down due to her age. Undeterred, she undertook rigorous military training, eventually mastering marksmanship to the point where she could hit a pebble tossed into the air. Finally, in June 1943, Rosa was inducted into the Central Women's Sniper Training School, located in Podolsk, near Moscow. She excelled in her training and was even offered an instructor's position at the school, which she declined. Committed to the cause, she insisted on going to the front lines, even if it meant a reduction in rank. In April 1944, Rosa and 49 other female snipers, all graduates of the sniper training school, joined the 45th Rifle Corps of the 5th Army of the 3rd Belarusian Front. Rosa's actions in the ensuing battles were nothing short of heroic. She not only excelled as a sniper but also took part in regular infantry battles, capturing enemy soldiers and often volunteering for combat roles without formal permission. Her diary records the heart-pounding events and her personal reflections on the brutal summer battles of 1944, including Operation Bag Ration. On several occasions, she was decorated for her bravery, including receiving the Order of Glory 3rd Class and 2nd Class. She wrote in a letter, I was in the rear recently. On the train on my way there, I often caught people smiling slightly as they spied my decorations. In another poignant diary entry dated December 12, 1944, Rosa describes being wounded by a German sniper, recounting an eerie dream that seemed to prefigure the event. She wrote, It's amazing. I had a dream in which I was told I'd be wounded. Then I was sitting on the lookout point, and I remembered the dream, and it seemed to me like I was really hurt in the right shoulder. Less than five minutes later, a Fritz sniper hit me, right in the spot where I had seen the wound. I didn't feel much pain, like something was enveloping my whole shoulder. Once bandaged, I didn't require any assistance, so I left for home alone. I didn't want to go to the field hospital, but I was forced to. The surgery was painful. When they finished up, I wanted to go home back to my unit, but they wouldn't let me go because I'm all stitched up. One would think the wound is no big deal, just two small holes, but they cut it open, so it'll probably take more than a month to heal up. Now I'm in the hospital. 
the whole shoulder joint is sore, but not too bad. I'm thinking of running away, but what I will do next, I don't know. Tragically, Rosa's life was cut short at the age of 21. On January 27, 1945, during the East Prussian Offensive, she suffered severe stomach wounds from shell fragments. Nikolai Lyonsev, senior sergeant, said that he and another soldier had heard a heart-rending woman scream and ran to help whoever it was. They recognized Rosa. She was lying on the ground awake. As soon as she saw her fellow soldiers, she begged. Guys, please shoot me. Quick! Her stomach was torn open and she tried to hold her insides and with both hands. Lyonsev bandaged her with the assistance of the other soldier, and together, they carried Rosa off the battlefield. Despite the unbearable pain and her mangled body, she remained unyielding in spirit. As per accounts from Ekaterina Radkova, the nurse who attended to her, Rosa stayed conscious for a long time, speaking about her life, her dreams, and expressing her intense desire to live. Radkova later said, even in her terrible condition, she remained herself, no groaning, no tears. She remained conscious for a long while. She was very thirsty but she wasn't allowed to drink anything. She would ask me, Katya, give me some lovely cold water. I'll just rinse my mouth. And when I gave her water, she did only rinse her mouth. She wanted to live. When she felt very bad, she asked me to sit beside her and she spoke about her home grounds and her friends. I don't want to die, Rosa said, I've seen so little, and done so little. Rosa Shanina died of her wounds on January 28, 1945, in the hospital of the 205th Medical Battalion. The hospital staff members write in their letter that they made every effort to save her life, but all was in vain. They also said that they tried to give her as good a burial as possible. When Rosa was carried out of the hospital, Chopin's funeral march was played on the piano. At the time of her death, Rosa Shanina was 21 years old. Her last entry in her diary was made on January 24, 1945, four days before her death. Her last written words were, another nighttime march. It is dark now. Soon it will be dawn. I am sitting by the campfire, writing. How bad it feels when I have no superior officer. It is good not to be ordered about, but not good when there is no one to advise me what to do. My heart finds no contentment. Nobody needs me. Rosa Shanina was a force of nature, a young woman whose life, though tragically short, left an indelible mark. Her courage and skill as a sniper are well documented. But her diary gives us something more, a lens into the soul of a soldier navigating the complexities of war, duty, and personal ambition. Rosa may have questioned whether anyone needed her, but her legacy suggests otherwise. She serves as an enduring symbol of bravery, talent, and the often overlooked contributions of women in wartime. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a short comment.